There are many different ways to prove the validity or invalidity of a logical argument, like with truth tables and proofs by natural deduction, but they each have significant flaws. Truth tables can take an ordinate amounts of time, even when performed by a computer. Proofs by natural deduction can be complicated, um, also very time consuming, and if the argument is invalid, they can just go on forever. Enter the tree test. The tree test is an algorithm which uses a decision procedure to determine the validity or invalidity of a logical argument by checking whether or not the set of all the premises and the negation of the conclusion is consistent. But let's step back and talk about how they actually work. Say you have a logical argument like A, A to B, therefore B. Now, as if you were doing a proof by contradiction, take all of its premises in the negation of the conclusion and put them in a set. If this set is consistent, the argument is invalid. Recall that consistency means that there's at least one case in which every item is true. For every item in that set to be true, all of the premises must be true and the conclusion false because the negation of the conclusion is true. That would mean that the argument is invalid. If it is not consistent, the argument must be valid because there is no case in which all the premises are true and the conclusion false. Let's write down all of the premises and the conclusion in a vertical column. Now, if we want to determine the validity of the argument, all we have to do is examine the possible cases in which the set could be consistent or when all the items are true. Let's save items 1 and 3 for later and first look at item 2, the conditional. Looking at a truth table of the conditional operator, we can break it down into that the sentence is true in the case where either A is false or B is true. Let's write this down as two possible paths. In the case where A is false, there is a contradiction. Let's put an X to reflect this contradiction. In the case where B is true, there is also a contradiction, this time between premise 2 and the conclusion. Let's put an X there too. Therefore, the three items cannot be simultaneously true, and so the set is inconsistent and the argument valid. That's all there is to it. In a real tree test, we wouldn't need to think about exactly when the conditional operator is true because we could use what are called the rules of inference, shown here. The best way to explain the rules of inference is to show them in action, so let's consider another tree test with more complex premises. Here's our argument. First, we need to list the premises and the negation of the conclusion. Next, we have to consider each of the premises and create the tree. For premise 1, we will use the rule for the conditional under the rules for inference. There are no contradictions yet, so let's continue on to premise 2. The conditional operator requires two paths, and we already have two. All we have to do is add it to the ends, like so. Now there is a contradiction here, so let's close off that path. Finally, we check the conclusion. Using one last rule of inference, we can add more to the tree. Now A cannot be true, so these two, paths 1 and 2, have a contradiction. There is also a contradiction here with C. We have now shown that there are no paths, in which case the premises and the negation of the conclusion are all true, so the argument is valid. If there was an open path left, that path would represent a counterexample, and the argument would be invalid. Let's talk about theory a little bit more. Recall that the tree test is an algorithm with a decision procedure that can be easily performed by a computer. Here is the decision procedure that we followed. Notice how its rules always give a direct next step, and there is no ambiguity like with a proof by natural deduction. Take it away, my good man Ogis. Let's talk about three important principles of the tree test, which ensure that the given results are in fact true. All of these principles can be proven, although not as rigorously as I would have hoped. The first is decidability. This means that as long as there is a finite number of premises, the algorithm has a finite number of steps and cannot go on forever, like a proof by natural deduction theoretically could. The tree test starts out with a finite number of sentences of varying but finite complexity. By definition, each row not part of the initial set in the tree test must be a simplification of a prior row. Since the number and complexity of the starting sentences are both finite, and each step reduces complexity, an open path must always end with the sentences that have either length 1, just a letter, or length 2, a negation coupled with a letter. In the case of all closed paths, the test is finished anyway. Since tree tests always end, they have the property of being decidable. The second quality is soundness. If the initial list is consistent, then the tree test guarantees that there will, there will be an open path, resulting in an invalid argument. Another way to state this is that a closed path guarantees an inconsistent set, which by extension means that the argument is valid. Soundness is equivalent to the first arrow in this decision tree, as well as that box. In order to prove soundness, we must assume that there is a case where all the premises are true and the conclusion is false. This means that the associated set is consistent, which means that all of the initial lines in the tree test are true. 
Since the rules of inference don't modify the truth of the sentence, there must be a resulting simplification in the tree in which all of the nodes are true. Therefore, there must be an open path. The third quality is completeness. Completeness means that if there is at least one open path, then the initial list is consistent. In other words, the existence of an open path implies the inval invalidity of an argument. In order to prove this, we must assume that there exists an open path in a tree. This means that all of the nodes down the open path must be true, and every other node must be false. To show that the initial list is consistent, it is necessary to show that all of the nodes in the open path are true in the associated case, which would mean that the case is consistent. Since the tree is finished, the rules of inference can also be used to work upwards from the tree to the premises. And completeness uh, fills this box over here and is equivalent to the second arrow. Oh my god. <laughs>